السلام عليكم النهارده هنعمل مع بعض دون بورس اوفر شوتينج اكسشينج ريت موديل هنبدا ب ان انتدكشن اباوت ذا موديل اند ذن وي ار جوينج تو بوت ذا موديل ايكويشنز ونستعمل الموديل ايكويشنز ان احنا نشوف اللونج ران ايكويشنز اوف اول فاريبلز اند ذن اند ذن وي ويل درايف ان ايكويشن فور اي دوت اللي هي ريت اوف تشينج اوف ذا نومينال اكسشينج ريت and uh, another equation for p dot these e dot and p dot are two uh, differential equations that can either be solved analytically using a calculus of the variation زي ما احنا قلنا احنا we are not going to do this in this course but we are going to see a qualitative solution of the model using phase diagrams زي ما كنا بنعمل في الرامزي كاس كوكمان model في the first semester فاحنا at the end of this model we will be able to draw a phase diagram in the E P space يعني يبقى عندي P on the horizontal axis E on the vertical axis ارسم ال E dot equals zero equation وال P dot equals zero equation واشوف نقطة ال long run equilibrium اللي هي it's the point of intersection of the E dot and the P dot equals zero واشوف ال trajectory that leads the economy to equilibrium يعني اشوف the evolution of E and the evolution of P until we reach long run equilibrium اللي عند ال E bar و ال P bar So let's get started with an introduction about uh, the model. Uh, Dornbusch's overshooting exchange rate model is a model about uh, exchange rate dynamics. Where, as the name can uh, tell you, uh, it's the uh, name is overshooting exchange rate model. Or actually, the model analyzes the effect of a monetary expansion on the exchange rate dynamics. Where, as we will see in no. One of the possible scenarios that can happen is that the exchange rate upon impact will overshoot. Will overshoot, يعني will depreciate by more than its long run value. زي ما شوفنا برضو في the Mandel Fleming model لما كنا analyze the dynamic adjustment of a monetary expansion. شوفنا حتة the exchange rate overshooting. The Dornbusch model, you will see that there are three possibilities or there. One of the possibilities and actually the most likely scenario is that upon a monetary expansion, uh, the exchange rate will overshoot. Uh, will overshoot, يعني, will uh, depreciate by more than the, 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 the long run value. Okay, so um, again, let's have a look at the assumptions of this model. إحنا قلنا إنه uh, it's a model that studies the exchange rate dynamics. It builds on the Mandel Fleming model. Uh, it assumes uh, nominal rigidities. بتذكروا إنه في Mandel Fleming prices were totally fixed. هنا in this Dornbusch model there are nominal rigidities but not uh, complete uh, يعني fixed prices. يعني prices are rigid. They can change but they change slowly. Again, the key the key in the dynamics. Uh, or the key that lead to this overshooting behavior is the slow adjustment in the goods market or the fact that uh, there are nominal rigidities in the goods market and as a result of this nominal rigidity the exchange rate can overshoot or can exceed its long run uh, value when uh, a monetary expansion is uh, introduced. Right. The model assumes rational expectations. Rational expectations means that people uh think rationally and uh, they guess on average right yani on average their expectations are right uh, and also the model has perfect foresight perfect foresight yani there is no uncertainty there is no uh, yani there is no uh, stochastic shocks huh? there is no uncertainty there is perfect foresight Okay, يعني even when there is a shock, they know that uh, even if it's an unanticipated shock, but as they all, it doesn't happen with probabilities. There is perfect foresight. Okay, right. The basic message from this model is sticky nominal prices in the goods market can lead to an overshooting behavior in the exchange rate following a monetary expansion. This is exactly what we said. In the fact that Uh, prices are sticky, sticky nominal prices can lead to an overreaction or overshooting behavior from the uh, exchange rate following a monetary expansion. Right. لو بصينا على ال main drawbacks or main criticisms to this model. 
The main criticism to this model is that it does not have micro foundations, when it, which means that there are no micro foundations uh, for the aggregate supply. It does not have um, an intertemporal budget constraint uh, for the, the private sector or for the government. And therefore, um, it is ill-equipped to study current account uh, dynamics or the effects of government uh, spending. Normally, this model is used to study, again, the effects of a monetary expansion. It's also ill-equipped to study the welfare effects of alternative policies. And so I feel that the word welfare has to do with uh, the utility or the benefit of uh, a representative agent. Now, since this model does not have a representative agent that maximizes utility, therefore it cannot be used to study the welfare of alternative uh, policies. Like in, given these drawbacks, what we are sure of, in, it arrives at uh, very interesting uh, results. It arrives at very interesting results uh, that can يعني, uh, explain the uh, exchange rate uh, variability or the, the, يعني, the large volatility in the exchange rate uh, following, following, you know, uh, يعني this model was written in the 70s, uh, 76. Uh, many countries in that uh, time moved to flexible exchange rates. Uh, this model was able to explain the large volatility that uh, countries have seen in their exchange rate in a way that is consistent with rational uh, expectations. Like how we solve the model, زي ما إن إحنا we end up with a system of differential equations, e dot or p dot. This system can be solved analytically using calculus of variations, which we do not do in this course. What we do, in fact, is that we solve, we, we find a qualitative solution, not a quantitative solution, يعني a qualitative solution that tells us the direction of the dynamics or the evolution of the variable over time uh, until uh, the economy reaches the new uh, equilibrium point. Okay? Now we're ready to put the uh, model equations and we begin to uh, find the long run values of the variables. So now I write down the model equations. We have an LN equation, an IS equation, a Phillips curve equation, and the uncovered interest rate parity equation. For the LM equation, M minus B. Let me write down the equations and then we go uh, through the meaning. This is real money supply minus AI plus BY. The IS, Y is equal to beta E plus P star minus P. The, these are little p, little p's. All the variables are written in, um, in small letters because they denote, uh, they denote logs of variables, okay? Minus gamma i. And then you have p dot equal to alpha y minus y bar. And finally, you have the uncovered interest rate parity i star is, uh, i is equal to i star plus expected value of e dot, okay? All variables are in logs. Let's go through these variables. This is log of uh, money supply. This is log of the price level. This is the interest rate where uh, log of 1 plus i is equal to i. 
is approximately equal to i. So this is the interest rate. This is log of output. E is the log of the nominal exchange rate. P star is the log of the uh, foreign price level. And this is taken as constant throughout the model. And P again, we said it is log of price, Y interest rate. Yani P again, Y bar is uh, the long run output or the potential output. Um, what else do we have? Let's have a look at the parameters. Parameter A is in fact the elasticity of money demand with respect to interest rate. Yani A bit or A. Um, by how much will money demand increase if the interest rate increases by 1%? The parameter A is the elasticity of money demand with respect to interest rate. What about parameter B? Parameter B is the elasticity of money demand with respect to Y. What about this beta parameter? What you have in between brackets, Hena, this is the real exchange rate written in logs, right? Remember, a real exchange rate over in E, P star, over P. So in logs, it would be E plus P star minus P. Okay? Beta is, in fact, the elasticity of uh, output with respect to real uh, Exchange rate, yeah. beta, capital beta, is the elasticity of Y with respect to the real exchange rate. As if beta tells you if the real uh, exchange rate increases by 1%, by how much will Y increase? It will increase by beta. So what about gamma? Gamma is the elasticity of output with, res with respect to the interest rate. So gamma is the elasticity of Y with respect to the interest rate. Finally, alpha is a parameter that signifies that alpha is a parameter in the Phillips curve. It's a parameter that tells you if output exceeds the potential output, then the price level will rise. Yani you will have inflation. If output exceeds the potential, you will have uh, inflation. طبعا, uh, يعني this is like a simplified Phillips curve. So, um, finally, we have, we have identified or explained all of our parameters. Let's have a look at this uncovered interest rate parity condition. And you know, I is equal to I star plus expected EDA. But since we have rational expectations, يعني, all you know, investors guess on average, right? So, we have you know, expected E dot is equal to the actual E dot. So we can replace this uncovered interest rate parity by writing E equals to I star plus E dot. Okay? Now, what we're going to do next is that we're going to find the long run values of the variables. Again, remember for Van der Fleming, we're going to do a comparative analysis. We're going to do a comparative analysis. بنقطة equilibrium تانية after مثلا monetary expansion دلوقتي what I want to do إني عايزة أقول uh, I want to find the long run values of the variables يعني after the economy reaches equilibrium I want to calculate the equations the long run equations of these variables when we are in the long run we're going to substitute in these equations the values of the variables in the long run. خلينا نبدأ بالفيلبس كيرف وبالunkovered interest rate parity. When we are in the long run, when we are in the long run, خلاص there is no more expected depreciation. When we are in the 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 long run, خلينا نقول إنه one name for the long run is what we call the steady state. And once we reach equilibrium in the long run, there is no tendency for this to change. In the steady state, we have in P dot is equal to zero and E dot is equal to zero, right? So when we are in the long run, if you put in a P dot is equal to zero, if, uh, this would give you that Y in the long run will have to be equal to Y bar. So, and if I substitute zero in this Phillips curve, I will zero is equal to gamma 
y minus y bar, which implies that y will be equal to y bar. Even in the long run, we know that y will be equal to y bar, full employment. Right. What about uh, in a, an uncovered interest rate parity, but only in the i, but say we i star plus e dot. In the long run, e dot is zero. And خلاص, in the long run, we are in the steady state. P dot is equal to E dot is equal to zero. No tendency to change. So if you put here E dot equals zero, in, in the long run, I will be equal to I star. If I will two long run values, and I is equal to I star, where Y will be equal to Y bar. Next, I will use these values, and here I star or Y bar, and substitute them in the LM, and substitute them in the IS, to find the, um, the values of the other variables in the long run. So in the LM equation, in the LM equation, I will substitute a Y bar. Let me erase and write it down again. Then all what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute I equal I star, Y equal Y bar, for the LM equation, call it an equation one, of an IS equation. And I will keep these two equations and erase um, the remainder so that we write them clearly. Okay, so let me remind you what we did so far. We, so far, we got the value of i and the value of uh, y in the long run. How did we get the value of i and the value of y? We substituted in the um, uncovered interest rate parity with an e dot equal to zero. But the i is not say with i star for long run. And we substituted in the Phillips curve with uh, P dot equals zero. But the bar on the Y doesn't say Y bar. Now I'm going to substitute. Let it dry first. We are going to substitute Y equal Y bar or I equal I star in the LM or in equation one or equation two to find the long run equations. I have to N bar. This is the, the, the value of M in the long run. Minus P bar, the value of P in the long run, is equal to minus A I star. Lay I star in I for long run, let's say I star. Plus B Y bar. Okay? This is the first long run equation. And then I can يعني, rearrange it to write it as uh, P bar equals, so I move the p-bar to the right-hand side, p-bar equals m-bar, keep it here, plus a-i star minus b-y bar. Yeah, but this equation, I will call it equation 2, مثلا, no, equation 3, yeah, نحن, we called it our name equation 2, so this is equation 3. This tells you that the long run price level is equal to M bar plus A I star minus B Y bar. In the I S curve, substitute Bardo the value of Y bar with the value of uh, I. Now I substitute. I have to a Y bar is equal to beta E bar plus P star. This is given and constant minus P bar minus gamma. I star. Okay. Now um, we will yeah, uh, uh, multiply beta by the different terms. I have and y bar is beta e bar plus beta p star minus beta p bar minus gamma i star. And then I will rearrange again to get e bar. 
on one side. So I would leave beta E bar on the right hand side and move all of the rest to the uh, left hand side and the y bar minus y bar minus b beta p star plus beta p bar plus gamma i star okay now rearranging again you can write this as uh, you can write this as p bar minus p bar okay minus p star and you take the beta as a common factor okay plus y bar plus gamma i star equals to beta e bar and then you divide by beta so you end up with e bar equals to p bar minus p star plus y bar plus gamma i star over beta and this would be equation four so what we did again in nehna ulna aizin nashuf in long run values of uh, e bar or p bar how can we get the long run values of uh, p bar or e bar? Yani long run values, yani after you reach uh, equilibrium, after we reach equilibrium, when, when the dynamics are over. Yani ihna, again, the model Fleming model, we can compare two equilibrium points, we can talk about dynamics. In the end, we talk about how the economy evolves from point to point. The model is all about how the economy evolves or particularly how the exchange rate evolves until we arrive at equilibrium. So the first step, we find the equilibrium in the long run. The is a steady state. The P dot will E dot is equal to zero. Yeah, no more changes in the price level, and potential, or no more changes in the uh, in the exchange rate. When we did that, the output type at the level is Y bar, with the uh, interest rate type and the I star, we use the I star with Y bar to substitute in the LM, we give them in P bar, which we called equation three, and then we substituted in the IS curve and we got um, E bar is equal to that much. Okay, now after we have done that, I'm going to stop here and use equation three and equation four to do some comparative statics. Yani yeah, to do some comparative statics. Yeah, let us want to erase the board and keep only these two equations on the board to see uh, what we want to do now. Yep, again. So let me write these two equations again on the board. Yep. What we got so far is in P bar is equal to M bar plus AI star minus BY bar. Look a man, I'm gonna E bar is equal to P bar minus P star. These are little P's bar plus uh, Y bar plus gamma I star over beta. Okay. Now let's use these two equations 
to do some comparative statics, يعني if you do some comparative statics, يعني to ask the type of question, what happens to the equilibrium price level, and what happens to the equilibrium exchange rate, if, for example, there is a monetary expansion, يعني كأننا بنقول, if M bar increased to a higher level, what will happen to the new equilibrium P bar, and the new equilibrium E bar. And then we will ask the question, طب, what if the interest rate increased? What will happen to the equilibrium P bar and the equilibrium E bar? طب, what if the potential GDP increased? Actually, these are the three questions that we want to ask. Let us see first the, the effect of an increase in M. The effect of an increase in M, as the equation tells you, إنه, if M increases, P bar will increase by the same proportion. Show the coefficient here. It's one. So if M increases in the long run, P bar will increase by the same proportion. Not only that. Not only that. Um, there is one more equation that um, would be useful to add here. Alfin e here. This is equation. I, know, I would call this, and we call the three and four, but if, if I now call this equation, okay, three, the equation four. Can we substitute equation three into equation four? Yeah, if I take, this is P bar, it's M bar plus AI star minus B Y bar. Well, this is E bar, in the long run, uh, equilibrium exchange rate as a function of P, Y, and I. If we can substitute, if I tell you substitute equation 3 into equation 4, then you can write E bar is equal to, and then you substitute this equation in place of P bar. So you can write it's equal to M bar plus AI star minus b y bar minus p star plus y bar plus gamma i star over beta. So, يعني what I did again, احنا قلنا the equations دول بيدونا p bar with e bar في long run as functions of m or i or y. هنا أنا عندي e function of still p و p star و y و i. Now, if you substitute equation 3 into equation 4, you will get E bar as a, as a function of uh, Y, or I, or M only. Now, by, يعني, by rearranging this equation, يعني collecting the I stars together, okay, and collecting the Y bars together, you arrive at this equation, E bar is equal to M bar minus P star plus A plus alpha gamma, sorry, gamma over beta I star plus one over beta minus B Y bar. This would be equation five. Okay. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use again equation three, equation four, equation five to see the effect of changes in M or I or Y. Oh, the effect of change in M, I, Y, in about M, I, Y on the long run values of P and E. Now let's start again, all over again, with the case of a monetary expansion. If M increases, equation 3 tells you what? Tells you that if M increases, the long run price level will have to also increase one for one, with the same proportion. Oh, by the way, this is not new. In the long run, when prices fully adjust, we have 
a classical notion that we all uh, have يعني, seen many times, which is that of money neutrality. إنو, eventually, in the long run, if M increases by 10%, P will increase by 10%. Okay? طيب. Let's see the economic logic or the economic intuition behind this. Economic logic is when M, which is money supply, increases, okay, when M increases, before prices increase, you will have M over P, and here real money supply increasing, okay? But since we are in the long run and we have equilibrium in the three markets, and by the way, equilibrium in the in the long run is a general equilibrium. Equilibrium in the assets market, equilibrium in the goods market, and in the foreign exchange market. So since we are in the long run, if again, if M increased, so M over P increases. But since we are in the long run, we want to restore equilibrium. The money supply, real money supply, is now more than real money demand. Okay? Now, for short run, we real money supply, after real money demand, اللي بيحصل إنه ال interest rate يقل. لكن إحنا في long run, ال interest rate is fixed or is constant at I star. يبقى in order to restore equilibrium هنا, لازم ال P كمان تزيد. لما ال P كمان تزيد بنفس النسبة, يرجع ال real money supply يساوي ال real money demand. يبقى again, from the equation, إحنا عارفين إنه if M increases, P will increase by the same proportion. طب ده كلام ده في long run after we reach the uh, equilibrium in the long run after prices fully adjust. طب إيه logic behind it أو the economic intuition behind it is that when M increases, the real money supply will increase, and it will be more than real money demand. Since we are in equilibrium in the long run, so we need something to restore this equilibrium. This thing has to be higher price left. Okay? Now, what about the impact on E? The impact on E is easily seen from this equation. After I substituted uh, equation 3 into equation 4, we got this equation. I hope it will be clear. E bar is equal to M bar plus AI star minus B Y bar minus p star plus y bar plus gamma i over uh, gamma i star over beta and I'm going to rearrange it where in e bar is equal to m bar minus p star plus a term that multiplied by i star plus a term that multiplied by y bar if m increased what happens to e bar and it increases one for one if m increases by delta m this results into delta P equal to delta E. كلهم, they increase with the same proportion. Well, again, this is not a surprise. This is the money neutrality thing. Right. Now, let's see the economic logic.